I think there's a perception that a lot of the Nike guys are, are more road guys or track guys or short trail guys. And, and while in the past that's, that's been pretty true, I think uh, it really just comes down to toughness. And I think, you know, it's one of the toughest teams out there. I think there's a history of Americans not being on the podium at UTMB. And there's a great tradition of Europeans running really, really well in their home mountains. But I think, uh, I think this team's going to surprise some people. I think at the heart of it, just completing the 100K distance is going to be a success. It's my first time tackling that distance, so just finishing and crossing that line, I'm going to definitely pull some satisfaction out of that. But the competitor in me has much bigger goals, and I would say a successful outcome is going to be staying on the podium. So it should be pretty exciting to you know, go to three countries in a single race in a single day. And then the, the terrain, I'm excited to get out there, explore the mountain, see what it has to offer us. Coming from the States and the Sierra Nevada range, I feel pretty prepared and uh, ready to hopefully show that Americans can hold their own in Europe. The steep climbs and the steep descents and just the overall amount of vert poses a different type of challenge. I've raced in Europe a few times, but this will be one of my first big tests. Yeah, I feel like Americans, we kind of have to earn our Euro wings, so to speak. But I don't just want to beat other people. I'm racing the clock. When that gun goes off, that means I try and get from the start line to the finish line as fast as I can. I guess this is part of my quest to do that. Obviously, the, the major goal is just to finish the race, like get to the finish line. Second goal for me is like top 10, like I'd like to be on the podium. And then, you know, there's always the ultimate goal. That's always out there. First thing is run around the mountain. The real competitor in me wants to be the top place on that podium. So even though, you know, this is uncharted territory, the European racing 100K distance, I feel prepared and I'm excited. And sometimes when I get in that mode, I feel like anything's possible. Sure I am that this 
day. Now we are the masters of our fate. That the task which has been set us is not above our strength. That its pangs and toils are not beyond our endurance. As long as we have faith in our cause and uh, an unconquerable willpower, salvation will not be denied us. All the mountains are huge, but like Mont Blanc's on like a different level. The mountains here, undoubtedly gorgeous, magnificent, mind blowing, but also very aggressive. You can't really find mountains like this back home. Mountains do what they do, like they put things in perspective. And when you're standing on a glacier or standing on some ridge looking at this massive mountain, it's like one of the most humbling experiences in the world. You can't really escape it. You can't keep it out of your <laughs> mind. It's, it's there in your face the entire time. And it's brought a whole new meaning of respecting the mountains and really just respecting the, the journey ahead. The day overall started off solid in the beginning. I just kind of tried to listen to my body, not push too hard, and I ended up kind of just naturally going to the lead. I decided I was gonna hike early and hike often, really save my legs for the downhills. I actually caught up to Zach almost 50K in, and at that point, I was feeling absolutely fantastic. And I thought I was just gonna run away with it from there. And I got to basically from La Foulie to Champagne Lac. Things started getting tougher. The heat was getting to me. I was having trouble staying hydrated. I didn't want to eat as much. But as soon as we hit the next climb into Champagne Lac, my legs started seizing up on me and cramping. I think I really just need to replenish for a minute. At that point, I realized I'm halfway through this race. I need to not get overzealous and refocus my goals on just moving forward. Just gotta be smart. Remind myself that it's okay to walk a little bit. I really hit a low point. Everything was cramping. My, my calves were cramping, my quads were cramping. And I turn around and here's a Frenchman, uh, Nicola. He caught me at that point and he, he looked fantastic. He uh, disappeared off into the forest and I thought, this is kind of shitty. Like, I don't know if I can keep going. It was pretty tough from Champelac to Trient on the Switzerland side. And when I got to Trient, the French runner was coming into the aid station as I was leaving and I got pretty scared.
As we entered into Trient, I actually turned a corner. Stomach was feeling better, my legs were feeling better. I'm David Laney, I'm 26 years old, and I train and live in Ashland, Oregon. So I think my training for UTMB started like the day after states pretty much. Moved in my car and camping all summer. I've been in the Steens and in the Wallawas, down in Mammoth Lakes for a while, training with Tim. I'm just trying to find the biggest mountains and uh, some really hard, tough trails. It's been much more, much more long days than I've done in the past. A lot more hiking, a lot more really long runs, tough climbs. UTMB means a lot to me for a lot of reasons. The mountains over there are just so spectacular. You know, it's more fun to run fast in big mountains. I think it also is kind of breaking this stigma about myself and about the Nike guys. I think people think we want smooth, fast, downhill races, and that's not the case. Uh, the Euros have such a great tradition of running fast in the mountains, especially on technical trails. But yeah, I know what I've been doing, I know what Tim's been doing, and I know what Zach's been doing. And I think it'll go a lot better than, than people expect. So things didn't go great the first 20 miles. It was kind of like, just couldn't find my groove. But I kept really relaxed and wasn't too worried about it. And then once the sun went down, things started to click a little bit more. Started feeling good, the moon was out. And then just slowly things started clicking a little bit more, coming into Cormier, feeling really, really ready to go. Between Champagne Lock and Valorcine, there were a couple good climbs, and that's when I really started passing people. Every mile I was catching somebody. That much emotion and that much energy just feeds on itself.
Sometimes people ease off at the end, they've got in the bag, they've got another race coming up later in the season. You know, they just kind of want to do just enough to win. I always want to do my best. Whether my best is going out like crazy from the gone or whether my best is going out strategically, the overall gist of it is that when I get to the line, there's nothing left. I typically just know it's going to be a roller coaster and I try and just not care about that aspect of it. Like, yeah, this is going to be really bad. You just have to not care about it. Like, it's almost apathy toward pain and apathy toward suffering. Like, this is going to be terrible for three hours or ten hours or you just be like, well, that's what's happening right now. Like, this is the experience I'm in and it's not going to change and I just don't care that it hurts. His obsession with running, it's not something that he talks about, but internally I think that it's maybe one of the hottest burning fires out there of any human alive. And he's not gonna tell you about it, but it's unbelievable. The drive that he has and like the fact that he just will not quit. If anyone won't quit, it's David. There's absolutely no question in my mind. The things I most admire about the guys on our team is that they run with their whole heart. They're so passionate about running in the mountains. And it's that fire, that overall grit that every time they show up to a race, they're capable of doing great things. that Zach was ahead of me and that we were going to wrap up a 1-2 finish for the U.S. and Nike Trail. I couldn't have imagined it playing out any better. It was storybook ending.